Hello, I'm John Conroy. I'm a hip and knee surgeon from Harrogate Hospital, but I also work in Leeds Nuffield, particularly for performing robotic assisted surgery with a Mako robot. I'm going to give you a quick run through of a Mako total hip replacement. And here we can see the start of the procedure with the patient in the lateral position. And we're going to place three pelvic pins for the tracker placement. I do this freehand I'm using a drill and threaded pins. We place one drill in the alley at crest and then put a tracker base over the top of the first um, drill pin. Then we add in two more drill pins for stability. It's similar to putting on a pelvic X-fix and after a bit of practice you can place these pins uh, very quick, quickly and accurately. I've tried to make this video uh, as much in real time as possible so you're able to get an indication of how quick uh, robotic surgery can be and how some of the steps for a standard hip replacement can be um, reduced. One of the most important things about robotic assisted surgery and the, the system that we use is the preoperative planning that we'll already have talk, talked about um, and this allows us to work out exactly what size implants we need for this, for this surgery uh, way before we've uh, even made our first incision. So here we've put our tracker um, and fixed it firmly onto the pelvic pins and we're able to um, aim that towards the sensor at the head of the table. Um, I've now placed in a, a pin in the greater trochanter which is called a reference pin and uh, here I'm marking the reference pin um, before we dislocate the hip. We mark the reference pin at the tip of the trochanter, uh, at the um, lateral aspect of the trochanter and also we mark an ECG dot that we've stuck on the lateral aspect of the um, distal femur as two reference points. Um, now we are going to go ahead and dislocate the hip and these reference points can identify the offset and the leg length at a later date in the, um, in the operation. Here we're cutting the um, femoral neck as, a, as you would do in, in a standard uh, hip replacement procedure. Just removing the head with an osteotome here. And then pl placing a retractor anteriorly Uh, here I'm excising the labrum as you would in a standard approach. And I'm identifying the superior um, part of the acetabulum, dividing some of the soft tissues about a centimetre to the rim of the acetabulum um, to enable me to place a acetabular reference pin which is threaded into this position. This pin is very important. And it's important that it, it doesn't uh, change position throughout the procedure. So it's quite a rigid fix. You have to make sure that it's away from where we're performing the reaming and acts as an indicator to check and verify the position of the pelvis, the trackers, and um, the robotic system itself. So here with the blue wand we um, identify the reference point of the acetabulum and we place the blue probe in to that position twice to ensure that we have accurate placement and a reproducible placement. I have a foot pedal here which allows me to control the robotic system but we also have uh, in this case Ben who's a Mako product specialist who's working the robotic system and is guiding uh, me through the system throughout the procedure.
Here we start identifying anatomical markings and we identify markings along the acetabulum articular surface uh, through multiple points. And these points um, identify the patient's anatomical positions compared to the CT preoperative plan. It overlaps the anatomical markings with the CT plan and ensures that we're uh, at least half a millimeter of accuracy compared to the plan. After we've referenced the acetabular side, um, I now infiltrate the wound with local anaesthetic. Um, most of the local anaesthetic will go into the anterior capsule, um, but also around the acetabulum. Uh, the robotic arm has already been preloaded with a 48 millimeter reamer as per the preoperative plan. We have the uh, 48 millimeter acetabular component ready and waiting as per the operative plan. And um, quite commonly, I'll open the implant before we've even reamed, um, as it's very rare um, that we would change the size. The reaming system is accurate as it does allow us to um, ream with one pass. So uh, 48 millimeter cup, we put one 48 millimeter reamer and the robotic arm system guides me uh, in the right trajectory um, to allow that one pass. If I'm out by 0.5 millimeter, either anteriorly, superiorly or inferiorly or posteriorly, um, the robotic arm will, will cut out and, and stop the reaming. If um, we deviate medially, again, it will cut out and prevents any medial perforation. And we can change the setting. So if we feel that we um, haven't perforated or reamed through the uh, articular cartilage enough, we can add on another half or one millimeter and, and do the reaming again. It's a really accurate system. It gives you confidence um, and also cuts out um, uh, the time of reaming. It also gives a more hemispherical shape um, from um, preventing multiple passes. Here the reamer is um, removed and uh, the implant is being opened and we reload the uh, robotic arm with an impactor. This one is um, a curved impactor. Uh, which allows for a smaller incision. And we've already preoperatively planned the, um, uh, the inclination of the acetabulum and the antiversion. I tend to use uh, 40 and 20 degrees. It can be changed depending on your operative plan, um, but generally that's the position that we'd use. I place the robotic um, arm with the implant into the um, position that I would expect to put the implant in by hand. Um, and then we uh, ask the robotic system um, to lock into place. Um, it's very quick the way that it does it. So it, it's locked into place there and it's guiding me to the exact angle to impact the um, acetabular component into. As we impact the component, it tells us how, how far we've impacted the implant in. So we don't really have to look at um, how well it's seated because the robotic system will tell us whether it's uh, down to the floor uh, by the millimeter. So it will go from one centimeter as you impact it down to eight millimeters, five millimeters, down to zero millimeters once it's um, flattened out on the floor. Here I've um, impacted the acetabular liner and we're now ready to um, progress on to uh, the femoral um, preparation. In more complex cases such as congenital abnormalities um, or deformity of the proximal femur, perhaps if there's a very short neck or uh, an excessive antiversion, both of which would, which would be um, clearly evident on the preoperative plan. We may choose to put a tracker 
in the proximal femur and reference the head neck uh, the head uh, the head neck junction and the proximal femur to identify accurately um, the antiversion and any uh, leg length um, deformity or discrepancy which can be um, identified in real time so um, placing the implant in um, the robotic system will tell us exactly how far the implant needs to go in um, in real time here with this system um, we are putting in the implant we're reaming up um, it's an accolade uh, to uncemented system we're broaching up here and we're going to um, place the implant size that we've preoperatively planned and then once reduced we will mark from the uh, trochanteric reference point an ECG dot on the lateral femur and then we will record um, for the leg length so this this technique's much quicker uh, it avoids us needing to put in a proximal tracker and also avoids us needing to reference the proximal femur um, but if required we can do this um, to give us real time leg length so um, putting in the um, trial um, as you can see this is all in real time so the trialing's been very quick and that that's because I confidently know what size I need to put in so I'm not worried about um, uh, femoral fracture um, I'm not not really looking too much about where the femoral um, head sits in relation to the greater trochanter I'm purely going off what the computer is telling me and um, for instance this might be a size 4 accolade 2 with a 127 neck and a 0 head and um, we've um, put the trial in that's expected off the pre-op plan and um, recorded the position of the leg and the robotic system has told us that we're within a couple of millimeters of um, what we've expected and um, we will accept that so now we're uh, in a position where we can open the uh, implants um, so we're opening the uh, acetabular uh, sorry the um, femoral head and the um, femoral stem so that we can proceed with the with the operation I'm infiltrating more local anaesthetic while we're waiting for the uh, implants to be opened I'm not quite brave enough to open the, um, the stem and the femoral head um, before we've trialed it. Although if you were a brave surgeon, you could probably um, get away with that. Here, we've, uh, in, in, well, here we are implanting the, the, uh, the stem. We place the stem in exactly to the point at which the uh, brooch for the trial um, went in and um, placing the ceramic 32 millimeter head which is my standard size I would use for this type of procedure just checking that the ceramic head is firmly in place and then reducing the hip we then do a final check using the blue probe in the lateral trochanteric reference point and then also on the ECG, cable, the ECG dot on the lateral aspect of the leg. On the screen it will confirm the offset in millimetres and the leg length. It's important we take out the lateral reference pin and the acetabular reference pin. And that's Mako total hip replacement in a nutshell. Thank you.